So let's now proceed with the online mapping tools. But first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Anoa Guillaume, and I joined the Global Nutrition Cluster in April 2015 as an information management officer being part of the rapid response team. So the tool itself, it's a file and an Excel spreadsheet that is also available on the Global Nutrition Cluster website. And it's essentially a list of nine tools. And it contains information that range from general description all the way to connectivity. We basically have a list of nine tools with information ranging from the general information all the way to connectivity. So we have a general description. We have information on what the tools are useful for, the device type, and for all instances, they are based in the clouds. We then have information on the technical skills needed as an IMO, whether geocoding is provided, and this is essentially whether addresses can, can be converted into coordinates, whether it provides information on application programming interface, the types of data that can be processed, then you have links for training material. You also have information on the cost. And it's on the last columns, you basically have the type of environment for which the tools are best suited. And then in terms of connectivity, obviously all of the tools are online. So we basically, in these nine tools, what you have is CartoDB, ArcGIS Online from the S3 uh, suite, so OK, ArcGIS Online, Google Maps, GIS Cloud, Mapbox, Mango Map, Ushuaidi, and Crowd Map. So, if we go back to the presentation, what I'm going to show you basically in the next slides are a couple of uh, snapshots of a simple nutritional status of, of children 6 to 59 months map that I've done in three of the platforms. And these are <clears throat> um, some of the platforms I'm the most comfortable with and somehow some of the ones I would gladly recommend. So now if we could go into full screen. Perfect. So here you can see CartoDB. And as I was mentioning, this is a very simple map of uh, nutritional status of children 6 to 59 months in the admin level 1 boundaries of Nepal. This is based on a survey that was conducted in 2011. So this is to give you a bit of the feel of how the interface looks like. This is CartoDB, as I mentioned. In the next slide, you will then see GIS Online. So GIS Online is pretty much the replica of ArcGIS. And uh, the interesting point with uh, GIS Online and this, its equivalent for QGIS it, is that it already provides you a sense of how the, in, the environment feels if you were to transition with the offline packages. Then again, the same map. Then we're looking at GIS Cloud, which is a little bit less known, but still very interesting in terms of um, ease of the interface. And the last example is a map with Google Maps. And in this case, these are some of the OTP operational sites um, that were part of the uh, emergency response for Nepal 2015. And in this case, 
With Google Maps, what you can basically do is provide the platform with an Excel spreadsheet containing the coordinates of the OTP sites, and you would have something pretty much looking like this. So the difference with the previous maps is that the, in the previous platforms, what you can actually process are shape files, whereas in the case of Google Maps, you have more of a bit of a restriction, and it's pretty much only um, uh, discrete coordinates that you, you can cope with. So I see that Simon says training for IGIS is available in Nairobi. And when it comes to training, as you have seen on the Excel spreadsheet, you indeed have quite a lot of, quite a bit of links when it comes to training material. So if we look at some, oops, sorry. If we look at some of the general considerations, what we have with these tools is a useful and quick way to produce simple maps that allows you to easily disseminate the information, be it embedding it in websites or dashboards. These platforms provide you with an additional and secure storage space for your data sets. And this is, I mean, this relates to, um, to transitioning, right? Making sure that once an IMO leaves or country, or if, whether you have high rotation or not, somehow the independence and integrity of your information is guaranteed by the fact that it's stored on a platform and it's not on just someone's computer that you need to chase if you were to reproduce or update some of these maps. Um, Nonetheless, these platforms require basic mapping skills. In terms of the data that is being processed, it's really uh, important to, to remember some of uh, the suggestions made by Anna when it comes to using standard CODs. And this is a way somehow when you have centralized information to make sure that whatever you're using on the platform are actually the standard CODs so that uh, multiple I'm, I am users going and connecting on, on that, the platform would have access to, to, these, uh, to these CODs that you have uploaded. So this is, this is pretty much uh, the presentation for the online mapping tools. Again, also a reminder about the fact that um, we, we at the GNC level have tried and tested some of these tools, so you really should feel free to contact us if you were to need technical support or uh, help in, in basically using the tools. And when it comes to uh, online mapping, this is pretty much it. So if you have any uh, need for support or additional questions, please feel free to contact us and ask them. So the floor is open. May you have questions, please feel free to ask them. So I see one comment. I'm also interested in this training, but it should also be available in Singapore, I guess. Well, some of these trainings um, are, as I mentioned earlier, available already on the platform. So they have dedicated sections with available tutorials. Then you have a bit more elaborate formulas that are offered by ESRI with specifically designed and tailored trainings. Obviously, these come with a cost. And, um, and you want to see how to optimize this cost and, and for example, making sure that you have quite a, an intense participation to, to the training so that quite a, a number of people can have access to them. But when it comes to training, indeed, they're available for, the, um, for everyone and the, the geographical scope with the tutorials online is pretty is is just that there's no there's pretty much no limit to to who can access the, these trainings if i can add just hello yes um so the tools we were presenting are those uh, which you can access online and work online without need to um, actually install them some of them are free some of them are not free um what I guess Hano was mainly referring to the S3 training, which is for the desktop version. Um, just want to say a few words for those who are, who, who don't um, use ArcGIS yet. Um, the program is um, pretty much expensive 
and um, but uh, UNICEF has a uh, agreement with S3 and we get 50% discount for the um, ArcGIS um, software. Um, usually, based on my experience, uh, basic version is enough. So I think it's around 1,500 and the basic version uh, would be like 50% discount, it's less than 1,000. So usually it's not a big cost for the country offices to procure it. Um, the training, um, there are different face-to-face -face trainings in S3 and um, usually uh, if you take two trainings uh, is enough. I think the first training is uh, uh, like foundations of ArcGIS and it's three days and then the second training called essential workflows and it's four days. So the seven days training is usually more than enough for the um, for you to be able to produce maps that you need to produce for the nutrition cluster. Um, there is also um, a QGIS software which is very similar to S3 um, and it's free. Uh, however, it's different how you work in it. And honestly, I have never worked, but people who are used to work in QGIS, they say they it can do the same that ArcGIS. However, again, it's, I guess, up to every cluster and every person to decide what you are going to use for the um, for the mapping. But uh, here at the Global Nutrition Cluster, we do recommend to use uh, S3 uh, ArcGIS software for the mapping. And that's everything I wanted to say. Hanoa? Um, I see that there is a question from uh, Mr. Mohamed Zell Hoke about the name of the second training. It's called ArcGIS Essential Workflows. And um, honestly, I think um, if you don't um, have any experience with ArcGIS, um, the first training, which is three days, um, if you just have a uh, materials to read, it's it's quite a big book. I think it's maybe 150 pages to read, uh, but there is nothing super extraordinary in it. So maybe you even don't need to train in for the first three days. So you just uh, read through the book. Uh, but then for essential workflows, this four day um, course, I do recommend to take it if you are going to, to use ArcGIS. And also um, on the locations um, of the trainings, you can just go to the website of ESRI and they do have trainings there. Uh, usually it's done in all the regional offices they have, plus in some additional countries where they have capacity to conduct the trainings. Um, I guess Simon mentioned to Nairobi because we all took training in training in Nairobi because it's cheaper than, for example, in London or in other countries. But um, maybe where you are located for you as a location would be better. Thank you. So um, there was also a question about uh, rather a comment made about Mango Maps. Which, which is an other uh, free software. It's not actually completely free. You have some features um, that are available when you just take the free uh, version, but past a certain number of maps, as you can actually see in the Excel spreadsheets, the list past a certain number of maps, you actually need to pay. Um, when it comes, because this could be one question, what, what tools among this list we would recommend? I don't have any specific, um, basically, there's not a, a tool that would, I would discard, but I, I have personally a preference for CartoDB and, um, and ArcGIS Online because these two interfaces are pretty intuitive and um, they're pretty responsive. What I've experienced with Mango Map is even with a very good internet connection, the, um, the interface tends to, be, uh, tends to get quite slow, plus you have these um, adverts that keep on popping up whenever you're doing uh, an action, be it reloading your, your data set and so on and so forth, which, which can get a bit annoying. So, um, so yes, all the tools except Google Map that can only process 
um, uh, Excel spreadsheets with discrete coordinates, all the tools are pretty much similar. I would nonetheless recommend using CartoDB and and uh, RGIS in terms of how intuitive the interfaces are, the functionalities, and how dynamic the the, the, the platform is in terms of, of uh, internet <coughs> connection. So that is that is pretty much it, I guess, for online mapping tools. What about Tableau mapping? That's that's a good point. Well, Tableau, as you may know, is a software, is a statistical software that um, has mapping embedded functions. But in this case, and and there is there is a way to um, to use it. Uh, online as well and uh, and this is a software for which we're also uh, going to to provide a bit more information in terms of the support that can be provided by the GNC and is still waiting for her license to be purchased but um, but yes it was not included in this list should be should, something that we definitely should do and um, and we'll be able to to also provide a bit more information on Tableau, but definitely it it has um, it has mapping functions. It's it's not a mapping software per se, so it's not you need a bit more training when it comes to actually being able to process shape files and discrete uh, geographical coordinates. So um, so yes, Anna, anything you would like to add to this? Uh, yes, uh, just to say that um, without any specific mapping skills, you can easily use Tableau for producing maps at the admin one level uh, because uh, they have uh, already preloaded all admin one levels for all the countries in uh, into Tableau. So when you connect your data set, it would just match um, your names with the names of the um, admin one they have sometimes it would not be um, the same then you have to match those missing manually and then it's very easy to produce the maps however if you want to go in more details not at admin one level but into admin two levels and do like more modifications to the maps then of course it becomes much more complicated and probably it's better to do the more advanced maps in uh, advanced in mapping software because this is not the main purpose of tableau also uh, another thing you can do with tableau if you have have uh, GIS coordinates, for for example, from your 4W uh, GIS coordinates of the website of the sites. Um, it's also very easy to map them on the um, in the Tableau. Yes. So I guess this is the two main advantages why you can use Tableau. Uh, but for everything else, I think it would be better to use mm -hmm. the um, software for mapping. Actually, let me let me uh, introduce a bit of a subtlety here. Indeed, when it comes to Tableau uh, online, yes, you would you would be pretty much um, limited to admin one, and uh, and the procedure that Anna indicated. Now, if you were to go for the offline package, you could then um, be able to process shape files and discrete coordinates, and do a bit more advanced mapping. So, um, so yes, admin one offline, uh, and admin one and and further admin levels offline, admin one online. Mohamed, regarding your question that Tableau looks user friendly tool, can GLC assist uh, and circulate a one page guide for Tableau? Um, I think it's not. Uh, something we would do because there are many videos which are produced by Tableau on different functionalities they have. Uh, maybe what we can do is to compile the list of this software uh, of these um, videos and send it to you. In my opinion, if you have no idea about Tableau, it's absolutely enough for you to become fairly proficient uh, in this. And uh, I think they also have one or two videos on the mapping uh, in Tableau, which we can also share with you. Uh, and I think it would be more useful to watch like five or ten minutes few videos than actually have uh, this one page from the uh, GNC on how to use Tableau. 